And because it's a representation, right, he makes this point um, going on, that the bourgeois are not status as such, the state represents what is already pre uh, presented in the situation. Ergo, what it does is it uh, deals with the parts of society um, which under capitalism are primarily going to be bourgeois parts, right? Insofar as the bourgeois decide the economic base and the social classes or, uh, or social reality, right, this is what makes itself manifest in the I, I want to say political, but uh, obviously it's, it's the non-political administrative apparatus of the state, right? Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, and we should also be clear for uh, people that don't have the text right in front of them that uh, Badu is using state in two different ways. The first is the, the part that I was just talking about before, right, the structure of the structure. Mm -hmm. uh, and then also he's using state capital S as in what is the... Uh, sort of ruling element of the society. Actually, I mean, this is, this is where Badu is, is making a, an innovation. It's, he's using both synonymously. Um, one is simply the material application of the other. Yes, but one is, uh, I, I guess, marked with a capital and the other one's not. And the reason why is the distinction is to be held. What, what distinction? between capital and not capital S. The material implication of what it is that the state is a particular state of. Yeah, it, well, I mean, it's always the state of the situation. That's, that's his point, is even, even the quote-unquote political state is a state of the situation. Yeah, it's a type of it. It doesn't necessarily uh, equate to it. Like, there might be stateless societies um, that have a state. Stateless societies that have a state? Yes. Uh, stateless, capital S, and that have a state, lowercase s. Yeah, well, I mean, actually, uh, he's pretty indifferent to that. Later, he'll, he'll criticize anarchism because anarchist participa participation is actually status in the sense that the only way in which you uh, can participate is if you're directly counted uh, by the action of participation. Um, but the, the larger point is that there, it, the state is also a bureaucratic and military apparatus. And so... It's, uh, it's, it's by the very virtue of like being an... Uh, well, you're an element right, of the state. They're, the proletariat is just as much an element of the state as the bourgeoisie is, right? No. It's not an element. The state well, doesn't deal in elements. It deals in parts. Okay. So a part of... Right. The bourgeois class is a part of the state as well as the... Yes. Right. Just on various things, the, the, the distinction being the inclusion and belonging, correct? Yes. Okay. And so this is why you can have a different state of the same parts. It's just the actual flip of the inclusion, right? The actual, like, the, the state belongs to the proletariat and the bourgeoisie are included in some parts. Not with the state, right? Because remember, the state... Okay, so it's, it's the axiom of whatever that is. Right? The power set axiom. Okay. Okay, so what's going to happen is, uh, well, unless you, unless you think that the, the proletariat aren't singular. If you think that the proletariat are just another class like all the other classes, then yes, that's possible. So this is more of Negri Uh Well, yeah, I mean, Negri and also, you know, a whole host of other people. Um, who's the uh, sociologist? Oh, uh, Durkheim also, right? That, that, that class is a, just a certain sort of social position. But not not unique, mm -hmm. or to put it differently, not singular. Okay. So the state deals in representation, not in presentation. That's exactly correct. Um, because again, the state is always the power set. Okay. Um, the state, and it's it's worth noting, right? The sort of foresight of Marx, right? For those of you who don't know, there's the economic base, right, which is our concrete material conditions, but then there's also the superstructure. Uh, this is literally the Marxist term, is the superstructure, which includes the state and laws and, and things like that. Um, and, and this is Badu's point, is that legal apparatus, that military bureaucratic apparatus, is itself right, a representation of the situation. And it's a material one. So, for example, if it is the case that our situation includes a, a large chunk of proletariat um, as a part, and, and again, I'm, 
I'm, I'm doing this as just sort of a course thought experiment, but also a large chunk of labor aristocracy, right? Then the state that we have is going, as a representation of our situation, is going to be fundamentally different than if what we have is a you know small group of weakened capitalists with you know a large group of proletariat, a large group of immigrants, et cetera, et cetera, right? The state that represents itself then will be fundamentally different. And so uh, just to use an American example, uh, just look at labor. Look at the state's involvement with labor. Um, insofar as labor is a, 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 heavy, a heavy chunk, especially organized labor, right? Labor as a sub-multiple rather than just individual laborers, Right. Insofar as labor is a submultiple or a part, right, that manifests itself in the state. Uh, when you have a great deal of organized labor, again, as an uh, as a part of society, you had you know a state that was relatively friendly to labor. Uh, it, it was not not out of any goodness of its heart, right, but just as a representation of of what the actual material situation of the classes were. As organized labor disappears, right. You have the state manifesting that representation, which is, again, you know, the disintegration of all labor laws, imposition of, you know, restrictions of labor, et cetera, et cetera. Does that make sense? Um, so uh, then we go into uh, 109. Uh, as I said, the state constantly seeks to mediate inclusion uh, so that there, uh, and the concrete example of this is when there's a riot, what does it do? It reduces the amount of people who can meet together to three. And the reason why it does this is, of course, it is dictating what the smallest parts of the state, or, or what the lar it, it actually reversed, what the largest parts of the state can be, right? This is a regulatory apparatus of the state, right? If a thousand people, all communists, all part of militant labor can meet together, what happens to the state? That is a significant part, and it can cause radical, uh, you know, readjustment of the state. But if the most, the, the lowest common denominator of representation is three people, right, what sort of part can they form? Individually, they can form a bunch of small, isolated, itemized parts of which the state can then take account and is no longer threatened as such. Does that make sense? And of course, the state could disappear, uh, or, or could only disappear, if the singular became universal, which of course is one of the basic theses of communism, which is that the singular element, right, the thing that belongs to the uh, situation, um, but is not part of the situation, overturns the state, right, which is to say that it no longer is excluded from the count of the state, but rather it, uh, basically abolishes the count as such, right, into a form of pure presentation, politically speaking. Um, and so he, he goes on that the era of previous Marxist thinkers has been to see the state as uh, alienating due to the lack of bourgeois universality, and that the revolutionary struggle entails uh, nothing more than uh, mobilizing singular elements against the normal elements. So basically what he says is, look, here's the thing. The problem with bourgeois society isn't that it's, it's statist in the sense that it's attempting to you know, normalize, right, include everything that belongs on the grounds of sort of a, a bourgeois count. Right? That's, that's not what's really at issue. The problem is that the state itself is a regulatory function, um, an administrative function that necessarily truncates the situation. And the truncation comes through the power set, as we've just been talking earlier, right? The excess, these are the theorem of excess, um, the excrescence of the state, uh, which ultimately renders the singular of the situation uh, unrepresented, right? And not present in the state. Does that make sense? Um, and then, of course, right, in this case, it's then a mobilization of the singular elements against the state, right? The count. Uh, as such, right, which is going to be a, a ruling class count, it's going to be a count of the bourgeois because those are our concrete conditions, and so the singular uh, is no longer mobilized against the 
normal elements in existent society, but against the variability which counts it as such. So if you want to see this, a good, a good place to look would be Bolivia and indigenismo, right? What is indigenismo? It is a singular element in Bolivian society that is not, that was not manifested in the state, right? Indigenous people were not counted, they were not considered as people, as a class, right, as a, as a group, right, because we're talking about representation here, they were not represented. So uh, what happened wasn't that these mobilized people, uh, uh, these singular elements of the indigenous, it's not that they mobilized against the normalized elements, 